Hello everyone, it's, it's so nice to be here and it's so nice to see so many people and um, I have to make notes of what I say otherwise I can't get it right but uh, which you didn't have to do. Oh. So, uh, this, this feels to me like all kinds of abuse. We think of abuse very much nowadays as things that go on secretly behind closed doors to individuals. I think we're wrong to think like that. I think abusive relationships are the sorts of things we are talking about. And of course the last thing they want you to have, if there is an abusive relationship, is the capacity to speak out. Because that's the way all abusive relationships are stopped. And what keeps them going, as we all know, is secrecy. And that's why I think this campaign is so wonderful. And every campaign you see is, is so encouraging because I have the privilege to see campaigns in other places and I think it's really great. And I think that point about what workers do or don't do, I think we need to, to work hard on that one because I think what it demands, and you were very gracious in what you said, is that <coughs> workers have to be subtle and skilled and nifty on their feet with trade unions that help make that possible. And there's different ways of support, giving support, than necessarily being seen by your employers to be doing so, so they can then quickly target you. So I think we are in the land of things having to be pretty subtle. Yeah. Um, and, and something which I learned a long time ago from the survivor movement, which absolutely motivates me, is don't get mad, get even. Mm. We're, 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 I mean, I, I love Norwich, um, and Norwich for me is, is a, a lovely place. Uh, it's, a, it's a fair city in one sense, and then we're here today because Norwich is not a fair city, uh, Norfolk is not a fair county, and Suffolk is not a fair county for those of us who have mental health problems. It is as simple as that, and it needs to be said. And of course, as has already been said by people, it's the spirit of the meeting. We are here not to talk about things, but to do something about them. So that the damage that's being done, I think, quite, quite knowingly by government, uh, does not continue that our opposition is managed, <coughs> is known, and there is a real challenge to the government's efforts, which I do not think are unintentional, to make it less and less possible for more and more people to live a decent life. And as has been said, I speak as someone who works in a university, I'm privileged to do that, from doing research there, from being involved in a service user organisation, shaping our lives, please do check out our, our website and check out our free resources. And because I value the, the campaign, I'm here today. And the thing, the, the thing that I've got from this campaign, hearing about it at other conferences, checking out the website, also knowing about other campaigns too, is what you've done, I think, brilliantly, is to highlight the crises, the crises that there now are in mental health services in the region. Uh, and to point out how devastating the impact of all this is. So you really do go on uh, to town, I think rightly, about crisis. The region's bed crisis, its crisis team crisis, financial crisis, community crisis, personal budgets crisis, Norfolk and Suffolk trust crisis, everything is crisis. The services that of course we must not stop reminding ourselves are actually meant to be there to stop people having crises and when people do have crises. And the point that was made before about only intervening at the time when things have got disastrous. When I was young, I went to buy a bicycle from a bloke who'd been a poor law relieving officer pre-war. And he told me that in those days they were kind of like sort of socialists <coughs> under the poor law. And it was them who intervened when there was an issue of mental health. And he told me in those days, he said, People were so frightened, so worried about what would happen to their family member that you only ever seem to see people when things were absolutely desperate. And that, of course, it seems to me, is where we are going to again. It's awful. So it's crisis for people who are in crisis. And the most recent statement of crisis <coughs> that we know has come from nurses this week. And if other people like me listen to the radio, what was the response from the government? Crisis, what crisis? There's no crisis. We believe they actually said inequality for mental health services. So it seems to me a really cruel joke that people in crisis, family members trying to support people in crisis, are having to turn to services regionally, but I, I say nationally from my experience, that are in crisis. 
And it's not just, as we can see from the notices around the wall, it's not just mental health services that are having that effect or are in that situation. The government is making everything worse for ordinary people. We know it's embarked, as, as those terrible stories on the wall tell us, on the most anti-welfare benefits campaign in modern history. It's, it's cutting welfare benefits as never before in living memory. That's not an exaggeration. It's capped the overall spend on benefits, which never even happened under the poor law. I say that as an old historian. It's particularly attacking disabled people and mental health service users, and of course we know it's done it in association with elements in the media who have launched the most vitriolic campaigns against people on benefits and mental yeah, health service mail. users. Sorry? The Daily Mail. People For example. Yeah, but that's yeah. not, there's rather a lot long list of that. The Daily Mail, there's the Sun, there's the Telegraph, there's the Times. We could go on and on and on. The EDP. <laughs> never mention that, would it? <laughs> and, and people have been a particular target for these campaigns both in terms of access to benefits, trying to access a more and more crumbling benefit system, and also the, we know the system of assessment, which while sometimes it might recognize a wheelchair or a white stick, is determinedly unable frequently to recognize mental health issues. And, and what the government's done is it's raised the fear level amongst mental health service users, as well as other poor people, and has greatly magnified the stigma and attacks that they are facing. So much for the anti-stigma campaign that's been taking and continues to take the government's money. It is, as I've heard people from this campaign say, it's no use anymore talking about issues of stigma. It really is time, as we should be reminding National Mind, Rethink and the rest of them, to be doing something just a little bit more effective. And about getting paid to support mental health service users. I do not hear it, I do not see it. And, and the, the, the levels of social injustice that mental health service users, alongside a number of other groups of, of people with less power, are increasingly facing, mean that really this is the time, as we've been hearing, the time for action. So government, I'm saying, is kicking away the supports for people having terrible times to keep them okay, to help if things go wrong, and to offer help and support to stop things getting worse and help them and their family. That's not the way we do things, or we have ever done things in modern times in this as a civilized society. They try and tell us uh, that service users, claimants, and let's not forget immigrants, are damaging us, whoever this us is. It's the government, I would argue, which is behaving like an occupying power, taking the money from ordinary people. Yeah. Yeah. There's been so much talk, 100 years since 1914, and I don't want to belittle that, but so much talk of wars and, and, and the rest of it, and enemies, and I feel that we are living now with a kind of an enemy that's ruling us, that instead of a government being there to support us, it's there to steal our resources and to cause damage. And I have to say, as someone who lives in London, I have to say, the further away I get from London, the better it ever feels. It feels yeah. terrifying in London. Join SNP. And there's no... And there's no <laughs> that has been suggested. And uh, there is no sense, I have to say this, there is no sense, when you get up close to these people, as you or some of you have done, that they have any true recognition, understanding, or sympathy, or empathy, for what they are doing. But I want to stress that there are two big crises here, in my, in my view. I say this as, as we've heard speaking as a mental health service user, and also I want to say as someone who has lost people close to me uh, with mental health problems. I lost my father-in-law, who sadly committed suicide when his depression came back, and he feared he would have to go back to the psychiatric hospital in Norwich, which he'd been to before, and which he had dreaded. There was a service, he dreaded it. There's no question that's why that he killed himself. So the crises, these two crises, in my opinion, are one, it's not just that services are being cut and spoiled, which is for sure, but second, we need different and better 
kinds of services. We want services that are less preoccupied with including people in diagnostic categories, telling people there's something wrong with you, and then essentially prescribing pills. And I was talking yesterday, I was, I was talking yesterday to a guy I haven't seen since I was a student who's a psychologist, and he was a lead on children's psychology in Oxford. And he said to me that as best he knows, there hasn't been an, an in, innovation in, in psychiatry in the last 30 years, even all the drugs, there's nothing new in 30 years. And as he said, and as we talked, what would they be saying about physical health if the track record was as dismal? We can't say that. We need services, we all know that in this room, that listen much more to people, where workers truly have time to be with people as they want to, where there is much more real talk. I don't mean CBT done like they're doing it, you know, get your six and then things get worse and then good night Vienna. Uh, but it's just about chemicals. Much more care, kindness, and increasing understanding rather than making people feel different that something's wrong with them. So we can't go on, I'm saying, with the present double whammy where people are in crisis but are facing an additional crisis because of the nature of failure of mental health services and policy. In addition, which I never want to forget because the policy makers always want to separate them off to all the massive problems being created by arbitrary welfare and mainstream service cuts. So it's that we're fighting for, it's that we must fight for. It is the long haul, I fear, to change all this, to fight together, as we hear, as service users, workers, family members, educators, researchers, even maybe sometimes managers, and to keep on making a difference, which has to be heard, so there is no more secrecy. So Mr. Lamb can no longer be Twinkle Toes, that nice guy in the government, but he's outed for what he is, another of many of the grand old privatisers who, when they hear the message, which he has heard repeatedly, they do absolutely nothing about it. It's a great campaign here, it's so nice to be here for that. It's great also to be part of national campaigns. This campaign ultimately will win, and nationally there will be victory, but of course the issue for all of us is for how long, how much more damage, and at what cost. Looking around us, you like, like you look here today at a meeting I was at this morning, you look at the experience, you look at the determination, the expertise, the first-hand knowledge that people have got, and, and then you look at the, 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 the little figures, the goes of the world, who are trying, no, I'm serious, the frightening goes, the Chancellor, the Prime Minister, these small people, I don't mean that as a, a littlest comment, but I mean in terms of their kind of stature as human beings. Then, then you realise in that situation, when you reflect on who we are, that we are not uh, on our own. There is real support, and we were hearing from you, and about the support that you were getting from other local people. It's government, not ordinary people, that have lost the plot, and that one way or another, we will find our way to have the support and decent lives for us, those close to us, for others in similar circumstances, which everybody should have a right to. So thanks everybody and every good wish for the next five years.